let's talk about uh, quark nugget dark, motor, dark, dark matter model. So I've been studying this model for the last couple of years or so. So we published a few papers here. So I have some experience. I'm happy to share my experience with you today. So I think this model is not very well known. So I'm going to spend some time uh, of my talk just talking about the basics of this model. So this model was um, introduced and developed by Ariel Zhitnitsky in a series of his paper, starting, I think, from 2003, uh, well, until now. Well, uh, the main interesting feature of this model uh, is that there are two different types of particles in this model, which are usually called quark nuggets and anti-quark nuggets. So the structure of these particles is the following. Quark nugget consists of quark core and electron cloud around this quark core, which is needed for electric neutrality of this object. And the anti-quark nugget uh, respectively has anti-quark core and positron cloud around this uh, anti-quark core. So uh, each of these particles is compact composite particle. It's not elementary particle. It's composed of a large number of quarks. That's the, that's the main point about this model. Actually, the idea about the quark matter is not new. It was, I think, largely advertised after the work of Witten in 1984. He proposed that th there may be two phases uh, of matter in the universe, the baryon matter and uh, quark matter. And he conjectured that the quark matter may be st stable it, uh, thanks to the presence of S quark. So what Zhitnitsky did, uh, he uh, added uh, two more assumptions on top of this assumption about uh, quark matter. The first one is that anti-quark nuggets may be present. So and this assumption is fair enough because, because if uh, quark nuggets may consist of quarks, it's natural to assume that antimatter may be represented by anti-quarks, anti-quark nuggets. And the second, the second assumption, the second ingredient here is the so-called Axion domain wall. Uh, well, this, uh, this, this is quite a trivial question. It may be uh, uh, debated, but uh, I'm not going to, de <laughs> to, uh, to debate about this now. Uh, let's just accept that it, it's present and uh, let's try to play this game. The, the main point of this um, domain wall is that it should create the pressure on quarks and it should keep this object stable. So, this was the main idea uh, about this um, domain wall for quark nuggets and for the anti-quark nuggets. So you may be wondering why uh, we have two phases, two types of particles in this model. And the idea, actually, this idea is actually good because um, anti-quark nuggets may constitute 50% of uh, matter in the universe. And the other 50% may be shared between quark nuggets and visible matter. In this, in this case, the baryon symmetry of the universe is preserved. So uh, the all, all antimatter is actually hidden inside these anti-quark nuggets. And uh, while well, no new particles are needed, this is just the physics. Uh, so axion is a minimal extension of the standard model. OK. Basically, this is the same physics within the standard model. It doesn't require much new physics. N n no much new particles are needed here. So the other popular question is why these objects are actually dark? And the standard answer is because, uh, because they have extremely small cross-section to mass ratio. So uh, for, for instance, typical uh, baryonic number, so this roughly number of quarks or baryons inside these objects is extremely large. It's 10 to 24. Uh, and typical size of this object is about 10 to minus 5, minus five centimeter. So it's... Uh, it's relatively macroscopic. And, well, typical mass may be of order 10 grams. So uh, this particle looks like a nanoparticle, right? With, which, which has a very huge density and so relatively large macroscopic mass. So how can we detect this particle, in fact? So, well, in this model, the good feature about this model is that we have anti-quark nuggets. And they, are, they consist of antimatter, which, is, which, which strongly interacts with our visible matter. So th there is a good chance to detect these particles just to, for looking for anti-quark nuggets. Well, and you can look, look for, uh, for instance, 
you can look for rare events on the Earth, like, like uh, seismic events, earthquakes, or atmospheric events like um, sound waves. And these uh, questions uh, were actually studied in the papers by Booker, Van Baum, Lang, and Jentnitsky. Well, and the other, the other natural manifestations of this model is to um, look for uh, manifestations in the galaxy, in the astrophysics. So anti-quark nuggets should annihilate with the gas or dust in our galaxy, and they produce very specific pattern of radiation. And this is the, well, and this is what I'm going to talk about today. So I will speak about possible astrophysical manifestations of anti-quark nugget model of dark matter. So let me, let, let me just uh, repeat my argument. So this is just schematic. Uh, we have anti-quark nugget and uh, we have ki kind of interstellar, interstellar medium. It, is, it may be represented by gas like hydrogen, New, uh, hydrogen molecules, so maybe helium, maybe electrons. These particles uh, collide with uh, anti-quark nuggets and they annihilate. They should produce uh, different types of radiation. And so the point is to observe these types of radiation. More precisely, le le let me speak about this picture in a little bit more in detail about this picture. So this is the hydrogen. Let's say this is the hydrogen atom and it collides with the anti-quark nugget. The annihilation should happen somewhere. Well, uh, in this annihilation events, a number of pi mesons may be emitted. Let's say uh, if, if you have neutral pi mesons, neutral pi mesons are likely to decay into photons, into gamma photons. So gamma photons may be, may, may be observed in this process. Well, uh, th th there may be a number of charged pi mesons. So pi charged pi mesons decay further into neutrinos, muons, and electrons. These particles also produce different types of radiation. They may produce different types of radiation in the galaxy. Another uh, possibility is to consider positrons. So there is a positron cloud around the quark core, and positrons may evaporate in this process. Well, then, then, this pro, then these positrons um, collide with gas in the interstellar medium and pr produce further radiation. Uh, and finally, there may be so-called thermal radiation in this model. Thermal radiation, I mean that uh, this object has internal effective temperature, and then it just produces a kind of thermal radiation. I will speak more about this. So th this is a picture which is produced by Fermilat Gamma Telescope. Uh, gamma, ray uh, gamma ray telescope. And this bright line in the middle is, uh, it corresponds to our galactic plane. So in, in the galactic plane, we have a number of uh, gamma photons. Just a question, maybe, m maybe uh, part of these gamma photons uh, originates from quark nuggets. Let's, uh, and we can, we can actually estimate this. So uh, what we did here, well, this is some detail of my estimates, we, we, took, we took the density of gas near the uh, galactic plane, near the, bulge, uh, near the galactic bulge, and we considered the density of dark matter particles, well, and we estimated the rate of collision of dark matter particles with the gas in, in, in the galaxy. Uh, and then we estimated the production, the, 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 the photon fl flux, the, the flux of gamma photons, which are produced in this process. I mean, these gamma photons, which originate from pi zero mesons. Well, and, and next we, we, we compare this, this, the flux of these gamma photons with the observations, with the, pub, with the published data. And what we found here is that actually uh, th there is a good agreement between these numbers. And our conclusion was that the flux of gamma photons with the energy uh, of 100 MeV and larger may be fully explained within the quark nugget model. Uh, these gamma photons make good part of the visible flux of gamma photons in the galactic planes, which telescopes observe. Okay, ne next I'm going to speak about synchrotron radiation. So uh, I'm kind of, well, if I go back to this picture, so I, I mentioned that there is well, there are a number of electrons. Electrons and positrons are produced. And these po po electrons and positrons are actually relativistic because they er originate from decays of pi mesons. When, the, when such electrons move through the magnetic fields in the galaxy, they uh, should produce synchrotron radiation. 
And we can estimate the flux of this radiation. And we did, the, did an estimate of the flux of this um, synchrotron radiation here and compared with some, radio, uh, with some observations in the radio frequency radiation from, from the galaxy. And we again find that it's, uh, it is quite plausible that the large uh, part of this radiation may, may be uh, produced by quark nuggets in the quark nugget dark matter. So that's uh, the, the second interesting conclusion. And uh, now I'm going, going to uh, speak shortly about thermal radiation, thermal radiation. So actually the question about thermal radiation was studied first by, in the papers by Forbes and Zhitnitsky in 2008. But we don't think they considered this problem properly because, well, it's, it's picture from their paper. So they assumed that the thermal radiation comes from collisions of positrons in the positron cloud. So when two positrons uh, collide, so there is a kind of Bremsstrahlung radiation, uh, and they estimated this, uh, this radiation. But um, it's not actually correct, because this is a two-particle process when two particles collide. And, uh, and uh, we have um, a macroscopic object like uh, antiquark nugget. Uh, so the thermal radiation is not a two-particle process. It should be a collective effect. So that's why we believe that the, the estimate that they did is not actually quite correct. And so we, we, we reconsidered this, pro, this problem. So we consider the anti-quark nugget or, or quark nugget as a macroscopic, as a nanoparticle, a kind of nanoparticle, of course. Well, in this case, the power of radiation is given by this formula. I0 is the standard Planck function. And this function E is so-called thermal emissivity function. And there is a uh, procedure how to calculate this function. It's called me theory. And we did this calculation. And this is the result of our calculation. Yeah. Uh, this is the plot of, uh, of this function uh, for low frequency. Of course, we did plot further. But uh, here I present just for, uh, for, for, for an illustration the um, plot of this function. And given this function, E, so we can find the, the spectrum of radiation from each particular quark nugget. So this is one particular example of radiation. How can we use it? Well, uh, uh, for instance, we can consider radiation from large molecular clouds in the galaxy. So the, in our paper, we consider Taurus, Taurus molecular cloud because, well, it's very well studied in astronomy. Well, the density of this cloud is, is quite well known. So we took the density of gas in this cloud, and we estimated the density of dark matter particles. And then we found the effective temperature of quark nuggets in this cloud. It happens to be uh, about 0.5 electron volts. And this is a spectrum which uh, one part each particular quark nugget can produce. Uh, and it happens that the spectrum is pretty close to the visible spectrum. And actually, a large part of the spectrum is in infrared and visible spectrum. So then we estimated the flux of photons here and compared this flux with the sensitivity of telescopes, like, like uh, Hubble Space Telescope. What, and we found that it is actually quite plausible. Uh, the light from anti-quark nuggets in molecular clouds may be actually observed by mo modern telescope. And the problem is how to re resolve this, this light from the background. If it's resolved, then yes, the, uh, the sensitivity is enough to observe this, this light. So, so it's a kind of prediction in this model. So um, this is just my summary uh, for our work. And uh, I would like to say that this model is interesting because it gives, it, it, well, it allows to explain many different phenomena in astrophysics. Well, and for instance, if you have any anomaly in astronomical or astrophysical data, it's a good chance that this anomaly may, may actually be explained within the quark nugget model. So that's the attractive feature of this model. Thank you. Um, for this talk, I'm sorry to intervene. I got an I am in contact with uh, Ariel Zitnitsky, and he told me to make it clear that he disagrees with the, uh, with okay. the various uh, results you have, uh, uh, you got, and present today. It's okay, it's okay. So, and many claims uh, he believes are incorrect, Zitnitsky, uh, so that the audience should know about uh, and should not be misled. So this is the statement by Ariel Zitnitsky, 
um, the inventor of the uh, uh, antiquart nuggets, uh, and which I want, uh, I felt I must do the statement. Uh, uh, I'm sorry for this, uh, but yeah. Yes, yes, uh, I know about this. We, have, we had a discussion with him. We have some points on which we agree and some points which we disagree in this model, but it's a kind of development in this model. Uh, Igor, thanks for the great talk. Quick question. Can you explain again the physics mechanism that produces this 400 MeV gammas? It's very high energy, right? How's right, it? right. So we believe that uh, they originate from decays of pi zero mesons. So it's back to this slide. Like proton-antiproton -proton annihilation happens, we have number of pi mesons. Uh, pi zero mesons decay into gamma photons. Well, and they have energies up to 500. So uh, between 100 to, uh, th th there is a distribution of energies between 100 and 400 MeV. So they originate from pi zero mesons. They definitely exist in decays. How, how many free parameters do you have to put into this model? Well, um, the main parameter here is the baryonic number. I mean here is this but, number B. But, this also number the ratio. B is the main parameter. Yes? Uh, but also the ratio between antiquarks and quark nuggets, no? Yes. <clears throat> yes, of course, this is another parameter. But uh, well, we, we, we agree with this idea that this ratio should fit, our observa well, should fit uh, the composition of matter and antimatter in the universe. We, 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 well, we can assume this. It's, it's an assumption, of course, but it's a good assumption, I think, in this model. Okay, thanks.